Hi everyone, welcome back. We are here, at least I am here, in Dunmeadow, which is where we would normally have been had this entire thing not taken off the way it has. Anyway, I hope you're safe, I hope you're well. There are a few things I would like to uh, kind of fill in around the lectures that we've been doing. I brought a fly rod with me and some other rods. Hopefully we'll get to that. Is that our rods come in pieces. This is really convenient if you're traveling. And to be honest the with you, it's just really convenient fishing, just going back and forth from home to, to the lake. Uh, you don't have this giant, you know, seven, seven and a half foot rod, you know, dangling in your vehicle. Uh, so let's start off with putting our fly rod together. This is a hard case, it has a zipper. Usually there's uh, segments inside that keep the blank separated. <clears throat> and we're going to start off with our tip top. That's the smallest section. We're going to join that to the next section. Something unique with fly rods, since we do have to join multiple sections together, we want to be sure that we do this correctly. We just don't want to shove these together. It's not going to have a real strong locked connection. But instead, I'm going to offset the line guides on both sections by about 30 degrees. And then as I push, I'm going to rotate those into alignment. That little bit of a twist kind of locks the spigot and the furrow together for a nice tight connection. Now we'll just simply proceed with the next section. Again, I'm offsetting about 30 degrees. I'm gently pushing those together and giving a little bit of a twist. Now we come to the butt section. This is, has your, your grip and your reel seat. And now here I've got to make sure that the reel seat, where the reel goes on, is positioned in line with the rod guides. And so right here's my reel seat, about 30 degrees off. I'm going to push that together, give it a twist, and tighten it up. Now I can go ahead and put the reel on. You notice that I use a bag. Some fly fishermen will use a vest. There's all different ways of doing this. The one thing we're not doing is we're not walking out through the water or wading the stream with this great big, heavy, hard plastic tackle box. So I've got my reel. This is an old reel. In fact, I believe this reel literally is older than any of you are. I like it. It's something I had as a kid. It was uh, a, a present. Um, I, I just like using it. And remember that reels are not that big of a deal in the lower weights for fly fishing. This thing is only holding the line. It's not really doing all that, that uh, much else. When you get into the heavier weights, the, the nines, tens, twelves, then the reel becomes much more important because you're going to use the reel to fight the fish. This is what's referred to as a down locking reel seat. So this is the adjustable part up here and I simply spin that and it goes down onto the reel seat and locks that in place. Make sure that that is nice and snug. Now I've got to get the line up through all these guides. The newbie way of doing that is finding the end of your tippet or your leader and running it here to here. But the problem is if you lose, lose that, it's going to go zipping right back down through. A better way of doing that is getting a few inches of the actual fly line and start running that up through your guides. Now
now if you drop it, it gets caught up into last guide, no biggie. You'll probably have to lay the reel out a little bit to give you some room to thread all guides. This is a an eight foot six rod, so fairly long. A short fly rod would be about ah, seven and a half. Once I get up through the tip top, that's this last guide up here, now I'm going to go ahead and pull my leader through. Once you get ready to cast, you're going to mend some line out. And that's simply pointing the tip down to the ground, to the water, and then giving it a little shake. So here's our reel, here's our grip, here's our first guide. This is called a stripping guide. Unlike spin fishing, we're not going to use the reel to make the cast. We're going to use the weight of the fly line to make the cast. In the lecture, if you read through the notes, I practice what's called a four-step straight line casting technique. And so the four steps is the pickup, the back cast, the forward cast, and the presentation. The pickup is very, very important. After you've mended some line out, it's laying out there on the water, you're going to want to accelerate the fly line up into the air. The easiest way to start out doing this is to make sure that your, your feet are at about a 45 degree angle to the target. It's a normal athletic stance. Your index finger has captured the fly line right under the grip. Your thumb is well forward on the grip and pointing just like so. This is really important. This is how you do transfer energy from your body into the fly rod and in essence how you aim the fly rod during the cast. Your other hand, when you're just starting out, I recommend you stick it in your pocket so it doesn't get in the way. So a real simple cast would look something like this. Four steps, very, very quick. I want you to pay attention to the path my hand makes through space. I'm sure you probably can't see the rod tip right here. I'm wired up with a lavalier mic. I only have about 18 feet or so. But watch my hand. I want my hand to move in a straight line back and forth. You guys hear that? Kind of makes you homesick a little bit, doesn't it? Sorry. Anyway, back cast, forward cast, back cast, forward cast, back cast, forward cast, presentation. My hand is moving in a straight line. That's really, really important because if I can make my hand move in a straight line, my rod tip is going to move in a straight line. If my rod tip moves in a straight line, my fly line is going to move in a straight line. Probably doesn't really sink in right now, but beginning fly casters, when they get into this, the immediate habit is to move everything in an arc. In fact, some literature that comes with your, your you know, getting started in fly fishing outfit will have a little pamphlet there and they'll talk about 10 and 2 on a clock dial. Yeah, like we use those anymore. But a clock dial is a circle and between 10 and 2 is an arc and so our mental image is that we're moving our hand in an arc. No, I don't want you to do that. 
I want you to move your hand very much like you are throwing a set of darts. Back, forward, back, forward. Or you're hammering a nail into the wall to hang a picture of your special person. So you're going to have that hammer and you're going to go bang, bang, like so. You're not going to do this big swinging arc. It's in a straight line, okay? If, if you can grasp that, you're going to be casting better than probably 70, 80% of other fly casters out there. The other thing I would like you to pay attention to is the wrist. When I'm making these fly casts, I'm not breaking that wrist. It is straight. If I break the wrist, my rod tip starts moving in an arc. And that's what I don't want. Why don't I want that arc? Because if that fly line is shooting in this great big arc, I lose control. So I have much less accuracy of where I'm placing my fly and it becomes very, very wind resistant. So if you're trying to cast into a, a, a real strong you know, headwind coming straight at you, that great big arc is just not going to do it. Literally, the line will get caught in the wind and, and collapse down in front of you or maybe even on top of you. But if you can cast that line in a really tight loop with straight lines, that really narrow loop is going to be very, very less wind resistant and much easier to punch through a strong wind to deliver that big fuzzy hair bug bass fly right on target. So another thing to, to, to watch for here is how I'm using my shoulder. I'm opening that shoulder joint up and actually moving my arm back. Then I'm powering forward with the cast. Why am I teaching to use the, 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 the open shoulder? It, it seems a little awkward whenever you're just starting out, but as you progress in fly fishing, It's an ingrained habit that will lead to much better casting using different casting techniques. Whenever you get into heavier rods, bigger flies, maybe you're down on the, uh, the, the, the flats in, in the Keys fishing for, for, for tarpon or bonefish, being able to open that arm up to deliver maximum power will really pay off. So, again, back cast, forward cast, presentation. What's, let's break these down individually. That pickup, really, really important. We want to lift that line up off the water, get it airborne smartly. It doesn't mean we jerk it out of the water. It doesn't mean, you know, we're kind of lazy Susan getting it up out of the water. We want to bring that line up smartly. So once it's up in the air, we phase transition into our back cast. So from, pre, uh, so from pickup, back cast. Notice what I just did with my head. I turned my head and watched the back cast. Why did I do, do that? A couple reasons. Number one, I can see which tree my fly just got stuck in. I might be able to retrieve it. Number two, as I turn my head, I'm opening my shoulder. And it becomes very natural, very fluid, very easy to do. After my back cast, I transition into the forward cast. And now that's where I'm starting to deliver controlled power. So remember that thumb on top of the grip like so? Now I'm driving that rod forward, keeping my hand in a straight line. As the rod's moving forward, it's bent. 
that bent rod is kinetic energy. As the rod starts to straighten out, it transfers that kinetic energy into forward motion of the line. The line accelerates and shoots straight out into the air. Wherever my rod tip is pointed, that's where the fly line is going to go. So at the end of the forward, the forward cast, that fly line is shooting straight out, but it's up in the air. I need to get that down onto the water where the fish are. So I'm going to make the transition from forward cast to presentation by simply lowering the rod down to the water. And when I do that, that line is going to follow right down to the water. Fly casting is not the easiest thing in the world to do. I mean, it's not like bait casting where you've got, you know, a half ounce, you know, weight out here and you can just bring it back and, and, and fling the thing out. I mean, most people can do that. Fly fishing is going to take a little time. It's going to take a lot of practice. But measure your success in fly casting by the number of times you get your fly someplace on the water near where you wanted it and the fish that you're catching. That's the important thing. We're not out here scoring style points. What we want to do is catch fish. I totally forgot what I was going to say. Okay, so real quick recap. Pick up, back cast, forward cast, presentation. When you're learning, all these things are going to kind of get jumbled in together. I think some of the, the absolutely the best way that you can improve your fly casting is with an experienced fly caster. If you can have someone standing there watching you with a critical eye, oh, you're obviously dropping your back cast. A little less power on your forward cast. Oh my gosh, look at your wrist. You know, I have duct tape. These critical criticisms from somebody who, who can really break down and analyze a cast are infinitely helpful. When we're normally out here on Dun Meadow, what I have found to be the very, the quickest and very best way of, of, of helping students is to have the student ready to make the cast and with permission, I come up and grab their hand on the rod. And I can direct their hand and their arm through that motion. It's not a real natural motion. But just, you know, three or four repetitions like this, they, they, the muscles start to figure this out and I can leave them alone and most of them are casting really, really well. They would be catching fish having never touched a fly rod before. So, don't get discouraged if this doesn't go perfectly the first time you're, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're trying this. Uh, I think videos are a real good way of, of watching other people cast and then break down step by step what they're doing and then applying that to your own cast. But it is hard to see what you're doing when you're doing it and you can't see yourself. Maybe you could set up a camera and record yourself and then analyze how your cast is going and you can start finding little area, er, errors and places to improve. Okay, last couple things. Uh, I, I want to talk about how to handle the rod and line in actually fishing because it is different than in spinning. In spinning, we're just casting out and then we're reeling back. We, we may vary our, our, our retrieve and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but with, with fly, uh, fly fishing, we're, we're not even using the reel. And, and so if we make our cast out 
and we have our line captured under our index finger, we're going to use what's called a stripping hand. And we're going to start stripping in a little bit of line. This is going to impart action and motion into the fly that we're, we're, we're using. We can take little tiny strips like this, or we can take big, long strips. We can even use a crawl strip where we're just kind of winding the line in very slowly. If you've got a, a crayfish pattern, you know, fishing a rocky bottom or something like that, oh man, that is just really irresist uh, irresistible. You know, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. I mean, they, they, they'll go crazy over that because you're imparting a natural motion upon something that looks like they naturally eat. That's the entire thing about, about fly fishing. We're presenting things that, that fish want to eat. Okay, so what happens whenever we catch a fish? Well, in spin fishing, you know, we do the, the, the big, you know, over the shoulder, I got one, Billy Bob, you know, hook set. Very powerful. I mean, we really want to set that, that hook. Well, with, with fly fishing, if I'm out there fishing bluegill and I do that, I mean, ugh, I just turned a guy into an astronaut. Not good. So instead, I'm going to use that same stripping method. So I'm going to take my strip, stripping hand and whenever I get a hit, ah, I, I, I just strip in, you know, a foot of line that's more than enough set to hook on, on like a bluegill or something. You know, if something larger, largemouth bass that you really got to, you know, hammer that, that, that hook home, then I'm going to, to use both, you know, a strip and a lift like that. Now I've, I've just displaced three feet of fly line. That should be enough to set to hook. Other thing about fly fishing versus spin fishing, typically a lot of times with spin fishing, we've got a, a rod up. Not always, but a lot of times. With fly fishing, we want at that rod tip pointed right at the fly. To be really honest with you, in, in spin fishing, you should be practicing the same thing. As little slack is in the line, the better especially in, 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 in fly fishing. How about, how do we land the fish? Well, with spinning, we can just start reeling in using the winch and crank the fish in and, and, and bring them in. And, and with fly fishing, again, we're going to strip line in, lifting our rod tip, we can maneuver the fish where we want it. I really wish there was a fish here. And then capturing the line and bringing it in. Remember in, in unit one how we talked about making a, uh, a circle with your index finger and your, your uh, thumb around the line? And you can bring that in and then right over the fish, collapsing those dorsal fins so that you don't get get you know stuck with the, the, the splines and once you've, you've got them there you can grab your your handy dandy forceps <clears throat> reach in grab the shank of the hook give a little bit of a twist pull the hook out admire your fish and then either either eat them or put them back Remember forceps, one of the very, I think, necessities of, of any fisherman, even spin fishing, uh, uh, kit. <coughs> okay, a couple last things. Um, advantages of fly fishing over... Over spin fishing. So let's use this little illustration here. Um, this is a fly fisherman and the strain bank, a log 
a tree has fallen down into the water, most of the branches have broken off, and you believe that there is a big bass, maybe a large mouth bass, or perhaps a brown trout, whatever your fantasy desires. Anyway, one of the big advantages of fly fishing is that we can put a lure, a fly, on t target in the target zone or the strike zone and keep it there for a very long time. So with spin fishing, we cast out a little bit outside of the strike zone and we start to reel in. And we reel in, and we reel in, we reel in, we reel in. Now we're out of the strike zone, and we're reeling, we're reeling, we're reeling, we're reeling. You get the idea. With fly fishing, we can pick up that fly, back cast, forward cast, out the strike zone. We can let it sit there. We can wait for the the rings in the water to dissipate. We can let it sit there for 30 seconds, for a minute. We don't really care because that fly is working even though it's just sitting there. That fly is made out of natural materials. Hair and feathers and rubber. Well, natural rubber. And if there's a little bit of of wave action on the surface. It's just sitting there and it's moving. It's pulsating. It looks like it's alive. And if a fish is under there inspecting that, he can see this thing moving even though it's not being dragged through the water. And you very often will get a strike right there. I mean, it, it, it looks like food that is terrified that it's going to be eaten, so it gets eaten. If there's no strike there, we can start bringing this through the strike zone. We'll strip, 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 strip. Now we're inside the strike zone. We can let that pause. Give it 30 seconds. See what happens. Strip, strip. Another pause, 30 seconds. Again, that fly is, is attracting fish even though you're not moving it. It's, it's, well, the entire thing with fly fishing is we're trying to match the hatch. Something natural that the fish would be eating. We don't have to impart, you know, we don't have to drag that through the water, letting that lure, you know, rattle back and forth. We can let that fly just sit there and do its thing. And so we strip, we strip, we strip, we strip, we strip. Now we're outside of the strike zone. And so we pick the fly up, do the back cast, right back. We strip, we strip, we strip, we strip, we strip pick the fly up, make the cast back. So you can see that our, 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 our time actually inside the strike zone is much, much longer in fly fishing than it is in spin fishing. With spin fishing, you got to drag it through the strike zone, and then once you're out of there, you've got to continue to reel that thing. Sure, you may have a high-speed reel, 23 to 1 or something like that, but still... That's a lot of time in the water that's not really being productive. One of the other wonderful things about fly fishing is that, you know, if we're working this area up here, and then suddenly we see a, f a fish uh, uh, s strike the water to our left, we can pick that fly up, do a correction, and hit where the fish uh, struck the water before the rings start to dissipate. Maybe there's a hatch going on. And so, you know, the, the, the trout are starting to, to pick these things off the surface. And then there's another one over there. And so you pick that up and you cast again. 
and then you think that you know your original target is getting active and so you pick that up and you put it back here and so you can sit here and you can hit all three of these areas back and forth all day long another thing that really good fly fishers can do and I'm not saying I'm one of them but if you're over here working this guy and you strip 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 you can it's hard to explain here but you can mend out some line do a partial roll cast cast your line out behind here behind your original fly like this and start stripping in and you can actually get your fly to do a u-turn because of the surface tension of the line and start going backwards oh you can't tell me if you're a largemouth bass you're going to resist that now no you know rapala or, or jitterbug is going to do that uh -uh, doesn't happen so anyway there's some uh, uh, what I think are some key advantages of fly fishing over uh, spin fishing take it for what it's worth fly fishing is just different it's not better uh, well it's not better it's it's different it can be confusing it can be a little difficult to, to learn jump into it start digging through there's a ton of information out there there there's a ton ton there are libraries full of fly fishing books there's a ton of information on youtube most of it seems to be very good everyone has their opinion of one way of doing it or or the other um just just start wading in the fly fishing waters and you'll probably get hooked hope everyone's safe Hope you found this interesting. I hope you get into fly fishing. Thanks a lot.